Salam sejahtera, my friends. The Penang South Islands PSI is the state's government initiative to ensure Penang has a sustainable future. However, anti-development groups organize themselves as NGOs to protest against PSI. This anti-development NGO have been protesting against other developments in Penang since 2008. They protested against the development of Spice Convention Center, Escape Team Park, Gurney Wharf, Penang RRT Plan, Penang Hill Cable Car, Road Widening Works and the PSI. Some of their experts showcase their PhD to appear credible so that people will believe in their falsehoods. But the members of the public are smart and can see through their fake news. The PSI is a well-researched plan. The preparation for the 2019 PSI Environmental Impact Assessment EIA were led by the late Professor Dato Dr. Sharifa Masturashed Abdullah, the Director of the Institute of Climate Change at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Many distinguished scientists were also involved. Conservation biologist Professor Nor Hayati Ahmad, wetland ecosystem scientist Professor Wan Juliana Wan Ahmad, transportation economist Professor Noh Ghani Mat Noh, Gopinath Nagaraj, a former director of fishery department who served in the editorial board of the Journal of Aquatic Ecosystem Health and Management Canada. Marine scientist Professor Datuk Dr. Zubil Din, former director of the Center for Marine and Coastal Studies at University Science Malaysia. All of them were part of the team that prepared the PSI EIA. The 2022 PSI EIA, updated from the earlier version, was prepared by 18 experts. Planning and design related to climate concern, location and sea level rise have incorporated guidelines and projections from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change UNIPCC. Therefore, PSI First Island is at least 3 meters above mean sea level, accounting for joint occurrence of high tide and 1,000 year storm surge. The evaluation of PSI's economic prospect was prepared by two global consultancy, PwC and Deloitte. PSI is projected to attract 70 billion worth of foreign investment, create more than 400,000 jobs, and contribute 2.2 trillion to Malaysia's GDP over a 30-year time frame. PSI is so one of the social economic recovery drivers identified by the Penang Social Economic Recovery Consultative Council to reboot the state's economy following the devastating COVID-19 pandemic. As you can see, dozens of scientists and experts are behind the PSI. In fact, the PSI mitigation plan has set a standard so high that the past Vice President of the Malaysian Association of Social Impact Assessment, Saifu Azman Abdul Rashid, said that there was none like this before. Anti-development experts showcase their PhD to appear credible so that people will believe in their falsehood. But having a PhD doesn't mean whatever they say is valid. Ted Kaczynski was a child prodigy and rolled into Harvard University at the age of 16, won the best dissertation for his PhD, became a lecturer at the age of 25. Later in life, he was so driven by anti-development agenda that he engaged in terrorism, killing and hurting innocent people, gaining the nickname Unabomber. He is an extreme case. The point is that there are PhD graduates who use their expertise to contribute to sustainable development. There are those with PhD who are driven by anti-development agenda. Anti-development groups spread fake news than doing actual constructive work. For example, they always liken PSI to Forestity to smear the project. Now, why they want to refer to Forestity in Johor when Penang itself already has recognition projects? Important landmarks and infrastructure in Penang, such as Welki, Stritsky, Esplanade, Lim Chong Yu Expressway, Queen's Waterfront, and Kapasing Drive, are all developed through reclamation. The reclaimed Banda Sri Penang is now housing more than 2,000 families in low and low medium cost units. Taman Areka, developed for public recreation, is built on reclaimed land. Four artificial islands were reclaimed in the middle of the sea for the Penang Bridge. Many factories in Banglapas industrial zone that provide hundreds of thousands of jobs for Penang guys are located on reclaimed land. Penang is successful today and livable today partly because of this reclamation. But anti-development groups completely disregard all this. They rather refer to Forest City, 
700km away from Penang so that they can criticise PSI. Some even refer to Dubai Reclamation which is at the other end of the world from Penang just to condemn PSI. What these anti-development groups are doing is not science, it's mere campaign. Another example of fake news spread by anti-development groups is that reclamation in Penang will threaten food security. This is false. Fishery department has recorded increase in marine fish catch in Penang when there were four reclamation projects going on from 2016 onwards. Comparison of the four years of fish catch before and after 2016 shows that there was an increase of more than 8,000 tons of fish catch despite the ongoing reclamations. Anti-development groups are vocal, but being loud does not make them true. Yes, they have PhD, but Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, has PhD too. They are anti-development. On the other hand, there are experts who contribute to sustainable development, like the PSI. Shouldn't we listen to those who are constructive?